Welcome to another episode of Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. Today we're talking about 90-91 hoops basketball. Again, another almost 30-year-old set. We talked about 89-90 hoops basketball, which was, again, one of these inaugural sets. A lot of pent-up demand from less basketball cards being produced in the in the 80s. Uh, but 90-91, hoops continued on as being the official card of the NBA, and they printed apparently a lot more. There were some good rookies in there, but on the other hand, uh, the production was considered to be uh, quite high. John Stockton, Isaiah Thomas, on the uh, pictured on the box. Again, that was uh, interesting. Two guards. Uh, basketball was... It's evolved back and forth between a very big man's game to a small man's game to maybe now it's medium size. If you can call six to six six to, to six eight, the three and D guys average. They're average for NBA, I suppose. They're not the tallest and they're not the shortest. Thirty six packs in a box, fifteen cards per pack, three hundred thirty six cards in the first series, and then they put another hundred and four cards out, but replace some of the first series cards with those 104. This is another place where price guides are helpful, even though uh, people are not necessarily always looking at price guides just for the prices, but they might be looking for uh, identification of which cards were replaced, and they're marked in the in the uh, online as well as the print price guides with, uh, with SP, and that they were shorter printed because they were only printed in the first series, and some of the cards were printed throughout. Thanks to our sponsors. Hoops is not one of our sponsors, but uh, Hoops is is no more. But uh, we are happy to have Panini and Tops and Upper Deck as our card company sponsors, as well as ComC, Beckett Media, BGS, BAS, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions. I'm not sure they're auctioning off very many 90-91 Hoops basketball anything. And Huggins and Scott, of which you actually might find, I think that this box that I'm sitting here looking at that proudly declares that 9091 hoops are the official NBA basketball card, uh, that box came in a large lot that I picked up for having fun to go through from Huggins and Scott. So I don't think I had any bidders being against me. It's not exactly a, a, pri- a prize lot that I won, but I it had a bunch of cards. I went through and had some fun with it. Another thing that Hoops did that year, uh, they did since they were the official card of the NBA, they, they also did these team night cards, these perforated sheets, typically about 12 cards. And the perfing was a little bit rough in the sense that if you tried to pop them or perf them or separate them out, they weren't they didn't come real easy. A lot of rough, fuzzy, fuzzy edges. I don't think they grade very well, but they were uh, they, they were nice cards nonetheless. The uh, we talked in the other episode that I did with Rich about eighty nine ninety hoops. They they did announcers. They gave the announcers some cards uh, each of those years for kind of to use as business cards, and I guess they passed them out and they could sign them. And uh, those are good cards. Uh, you just don't. You're not going to find them in packs. Uh, the 8990 is perceived to be easier than the 9091s, although I'm not sure. Uh, they're both really tough. And uh, the price guide reflects the notoriety or the fame of the announcers who played. But I I have found again I'm retired now. I have found that uh, there's uh, some additional demand for not just a rookie card of these announcers because they didn't play, but it's actually their only card. And so there's there's some, uh, uh, maybe even the announcers themselves want to get some of their cards back. I don't know if they kept them or distributed them all. There were also the all-star panels in the all-star programs, which were perfed. Again, you can pop those out. Uh, I'm not a big publication guy, but that's a publication I wouldn't mind having if it's got cards in it, and some of the publications do. They did action photos, and as soon as I tell you they're 8 by 10s you're probably going to tune me out. There were 159 of them. They issued them in, in packs of sorts, in groups, 
but you know they came out at like a buck fifty, and they're still a buck fifty or you know a dollar, two dollars, uh, eight by tens. Again, they didn't keep doing it because I'm sure it didn't do very well. People want cards that they can put in an eight hundred count box and and uh, and that. There was a, a one hundred count. Uh, box set that was put out through the Sears catalog that was called the Hoops 100 Superstar set. And it's actually the kind of the best of what I'd be talking about today with respect to uh, 90, 91 Hoops uh, product. Again, it wasn't in the, wasn't in the packs with the, with the regular cards, completely uh, a separate issue. Uh, it, it was done, I think it was done a couple of years, but it, I don't think it was done, you know, my guess is when they quit doing it, I mean, there were n- different numbers, but similar pictures, and it looked similar, but if you have a bunch of them, you'll say, oh, that looks different. But again, distributed through Sears, but if you read the Wall Street Journal and or other financial things, Sears has been through a lot in the last uh, 25 or 30 years. So perhaps the dropping the set was not the NBA's idea, but Sears' idea. Sears was just maybe reinventing itself again. There were 9091 Hoops collector books, and I remember when those came out, I thought, wow, this is interesting. You get a little bit more. There's uh, the, the production of it is not complicated, but it's a, it's a, if, if you were a younger collector, you, you, you've got more content than you have just on a, on a two sided card. And, uh, I don't know, the, it's not like a comic book, but it's, it's, it's readable. And for whatever reason, that was not successful. It's never been th- thought to be. I guess they're not very gradable. And and it, that concept was tried in the early 90s in, in other sports as well. And it just, it just, I guess it didn't work. So it wasn't repeated. There was a 91 Hoops Larry Bird video card. I remember having those. Uh, the video they're talking about is VHS for those of you who are you got to be pretty old now to, to remember VHS. Uh, in fact, you, you might not even remember DVDs. The, those are the, the, were the successors to, to the VHS, but you had to have a VHS player. It was tape. Uh, back when we had our company, we, we had a, we had a VHS lending library, which is sort of a perk. I mean, it was free. It wasn't our own blockbuster, which again is a defunct company, but we had, uh, uh, lots of mostly family friendly stuff, uh, cause we had a lot of, uh, uh, families and some, some adventure stuff and, and, uh, and movies that were, uh, just being released, especially when we moved into, into DVDs, which I don't know that I was an early adopter cause I had such a stake in the VHS, but, but at some point it just was all DVDs and now it's, you're, you're probably streaming if you're, if you're listening to this. Is 9091 Hoops Basketball Junk Wax? I don't think I'd call it. It's, it's probably a notch above, uh, junk wax in the sense that if you had, I'm looking at a box here. I'm actually not going to open it. I'm going to, I'm going to donate it, but it's basically, it, they have a number of Jordans in there that probably are potentially gradable. Uh, it's uh, reasonably early Jordans. The, the Gary Payton rookies, the Sean Kemp rookies, the Tim Hardaway rookies, not Tim Hardaway Jr., but the original Tim Hardaway. Uh, those, again, the production is thought to be so vast that you, again, even if you, I guess if you graded those and you get a 9.5 or a 10, it's saleable, but it's, they're just very, very plentiful. Even though all those guys had great careers and, and, uh, another guy that I think is kind of, uh, I'd, I'd say undervalued, but it's hard to be undervalued in a set that was overproduced, but it's Drazen Petrovic, which, you know, we, we, you know, I, I try to be a fan of all the teams, all the players, all the sports, especially when I was very involved with price guides. I didn't really want to have loyalties or biases for any one, um, a team or player, but you gotta like Dirk, <laughs> Dirk Nowitzki. Uh, I, I've been a season ticket holder since, actually since 1991, I've been a season ticket holder, uh, for the Mavs. So I've gotten to see, uh, I was there before Dirk, I was there during Dirk, and then this year I'll be there without Dirk. I don't go to every single game, but, but I, I'm a longtime season ticket holder and a very appreciative of what, uh, of, of what uh, Dirk brought to the franchise and to the NBA. 
but there probably wouldn't have been a Dirk if there hadn't been a Drazen Petrovic, who was uh, uh, probably the first European that came over with some fanfare, didn't immediately emerge, but then came on strong. And then unfortunately he was, he was uh, uh, killed in a car wreck kind of in his prime. And so he was, he paved the way for Dirk and frankly, then for the NBA, the NBA is, is, uh, is really a global sport and has uh, interest from around. And I think that's, again, Drazen Petrovic was, was kind of the, uh, the icebreaker, the pace setter and paved the way for our, our buddy down here, Dirk. So we'll talk about some other basketball players, some mas- other basketball sets and issues as, as we get uh, down the road. But in the meantime, uh, uh, enjoy collecting. Like I said, if you picked up a 9091 hoops box, it, you, you wouldn't be totally excited. But, uh, when I look back, uh, with fond memories of, of that, when it did come out, uh, it was, it, it was well received. And, uh, those were the, the days when basketball was really taken off. So it was exciting to be there. And, uh, even now I have, I have warm feelings. So again, I hope you're enjoying your collecting. If you got any questions or comments, just, you can email me at drjamesbeckett at gmail.com. That's all spelled out or Beckett Insights at gmail.com. And, uh, I've gotten a few emails and I will be responding to those. So, uh, a couple of good ideas for future podcasts. So if you've got some, uh, pay it forward, pass it on. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon, perhaps tomorrow. Bye-bye.